Hello, my name is Niko Tripsevich. I'm at the Archaeological Research Facility at UC Berkeley. This is part of the practical workshop series, and I'll be discussing bringing in data into QGIS from a GPS slash GNSS unit or a total station in the form of tabular data. I'll be discussing the coordinate systems that you might run into and how to save out these data into a shapefile or a geo package. And then I'll also discuss site-specific grid coordinate systems that archaeologists often use. In a subsequent episode that, that follows on this one, I'll be uh, making a very simple map and showing you how to symbolize the map and uh, label it and then um, lay it out in the, uh, with a scale bar and legend and export to PDF. So let's go ahead and get started. The uh, two common coordinate systems that archaeologists work in uh, one is for sort of regional scale data, and these would be decimal degrees or DMS coordinate system um, data. The, here's an example of how these look for Berkeley, California. You want to determine if the data that you are um, bringing in is in decimal degrees or DMS, that, that is degrees, minutes, and seconds. So decimal degrees will have a decimal point in it. DMS sometimes has a space or, or um, gaps between the three groups of numbers. And there's 60 minutes in a degree and 60 seconds in a minute. So it's base 60. And it makes it a little harder to do math with these. Um, computers tend to do better with decimal degrees. The uh, pros of this system are that it works globally and it's good for regional scale data. However, one of the drawbacks is that it's, it's not linked, WGS-84 is not linked to a particular continental plate. So it's not as accurate <clears throat> as a local datum. So it's recommended that you um, not use this for high precision applications, such as a, a detailed site map. The other issue is that these are not meters, these are ang angular units or degrees. So you can't take measurements in, in degrees, you would um, set, for example, the, the, the width and length of an archaeological feature, you would um, want to be in, in meters. So a uh, commonly used coordinate system for, especially for local scale maps, like a site map, would be UTM, or Universal Transverse Mercator. This projection and coordinate system is uh, metric and the one that's commonly used here in Northern California is North American Datum 1983 based uh, with an Epoch 2011 update. And the EPSG code for this one is 6339. So an example of UTM coordinates are, uh, here's Easting. Note it's six digits before the decimal point uh, and seven digits before the decimal point in northing. So you can tell the Eastings from northings. Eastings are number of meters to the east of the west edge of the zone that you're currently in. So you would always specify the zone like UTM 10 in this case. And, and then northings are seven digits because that's the distance from the equator to the, your point. So that's a long distance and often hence the seven digits. Uh, pro pros of this system are that it's uh, high precision and so you can take measurements in meters and it, um, you, know, you can easily calculate areas, hectares, meters squared directly. The, one of the cons of this system is that you have to know what zone you're in and, and that there's edge effects. That is what happens when you're working right on this zone here. Santa Barbara, California is right on the zone between on the line between zone 10 and zone 11. Well, one uh, <clears throat> thing I've heard about dealing with working right on the zone boundary is that uh, while it's optimal to use the zone that, that, you sh that you, you know, your data falls in, if you're right on the line, consider uh, working in the zone to the left or the west, because if you, uh, if you were to work in the one to the east and, and you went too far west, you could get into negative eastings, which is not good. Uh, better to, to have high, to have big numbers 
in the east end from the hub negative uh, by, by going to the west of the, the appropriate zone. Uh, the other issue with these local coordinate systems is that they have many different data. So you'll want to use a datum that's plate fixed. That is in North America where <clears throat> we can use NAD83 and that's fixed to the North American plate. And that, that, that allows higher precision and accuracy measurements. Uh, be aware that these are also regularly updated because with plate tectonics, these plates aren't fixed and uh, on the surface of the earth. So there's a new series of <clears throat> coordinate systems coming out in 2022. So we'll be updating soon and UTM um, is forever being updated. One uh, place you can look for information about these different coordinate systems is epsg.io is a website with a long list of the different coordinate systems and projections all referenced by their lookup table number uh, EPS, by EPSG code. Another issue I wanted to mention here is that there's a um, common approach used by archaeologists, and it's actually pretty common in the CAD world as well, is to use a arbitrary coordinate system that is a local coordinate system where instead of zero, zero, you know, instead of zero, like in the, in the decimal degree system, zero, zero is the equator and uh, latitude and the longitude of zero, it goes through Greenwich. So it's you know, connected to our time zone system. In a local grid coordinate system, zero, zero, zero could just be your site datum. And so <clears throat> it's, there's pros and cons to this approach. Um, uh, an advantage to this approach is that you have smaller numbers to record. So if you're writing down your numbers, if you have to write them on tags or in your notes for some reason, they're smaller than a full UTM or a high precision um, decimal degrees. And another advantage is that you can describe the site in great, great detail without revealing where it is because you can describe intersite measurements and the um, features of the site referencing this this local datum that, uh, without revealing location. One of the disadvantages is that in order to compare with other people, with other research, you've got to convert these data to a GIS, I mean, to a global, um, you know, real world coordinates. And, and the other issue is that if you want to bring in layers into your GIS and you're working in some arbitrary coordinate system, those, those other layers like satellite imagery or, um, data from others, you know, digital terrain, model data, those won't be referenced to your local datum unless you reproject them into your, your local datum. So that's a um, disadvantage of a site-specific grid. So let's go ahead and go right into, uh, oh, I, I wanted to mention the uh, one more thing here. We have an example of site-specific grids. So you could, <clears throat> you, you could have your datum be zero, 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 right, in your site-specific grid, but you don't want to work in negative numbers. So if you start at zero, 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 everything to the left or the west and everything to the south of the datum will be negative coordinates. And another issue is you, uh, you could mix up your eastings and northings quite easily because they're, they're close in number. So people will often use different ranges. And I'll go into detail here on, this, on these concepts. So <clears throat> here's an example of the datum right here. And we're using zero east and zero north in our coordinate system. These are 10 meter grid intervals. So as I mentioned, the problem with zero zero is that anything to the south or the west is gonna have zero negative coordinates. Like this point will have negative coordinates, right? <clears throat> so a common solution to that is just don't start at zero, start at 100. So here you are at 100 east and 100 north, and these coordinates are now 90 in the 80s or 90s instead of negative numbers. Another issue, however, is that you can still mix up your eastings and northings. So instead of having to keep track and write an E and an N after each number, 
why don't you just start in different ranges? So 200 in the Eastern and 400 in the Northern, and then here you are to the West and the South, and you're in a completely different range of numbers. By, now you could use 100, 200, for example, as your Eastern and Northern, but then when you go under 100, you've only got two digits. And if you're keeping track and making sure all your digits are present, it might be better for, for um, clarity to have, to have your coordinates always be three digits. So people will start at 200, 400 for that reason. <clears throat> so um, with that, let's go ahead and pop into QGIS. Well, first I wanna look at data in our um, data from a GPS. So this is a typical export from GPS software. Some, some, some GPSs will export directly to shapefile or to something that a GIS can read in. But if your instrument is providing comma separated values, then you might um, open the, the CSV file in a program like Excel and, and see the contents. I want to quickly mention um, that this is from an MLID reach, and it's providing both UTMs here and that long. So that's convenient because whatever system I'm using in the GIS, I can import the appropriate columns. If we keep looking to the right, it also tells us where those were UTM, the co coordinate system name column tells us that it's UTM 10 North with the vertical datum of 1988. So <clears throat> another thing to quickly mention is that some software like ArcMap will struggle to bring these data in because of the spaces in the first row. This becomes the field names for your uh, spatial data in the GIS, and you can't have spaces in field names. So I would, if I was bringing this into something like ArcMap, I would remove spaces and symbols just to be sure it comes in without issue. All right, so let's go ahead and bring these data into QGIS 3.22. If you go to, well, first of all, a new project here, you'll note that the coordinate system provided is 4326. That's the global decimal degrees 1984. Coordinate system, <clears throat> and if we click this, we can see that it applies globally. But look, QGIS is warning us that it has a limited accuracy of at best two meters because it's not a plate fixed. It's not plate fixed. So we should use a UTM plate fixed coordinate system like UTM 10 North. That's appropriate here in California. And I've simply memorized 6339 and 6340 is the one just to the east here um, because those are, I commonly encounter these. and. Uh, and just memorize the EPSG code, and I try to get all my layers into that coordinate system to make sure they all line up properly. So let's go ahead and add this layer. Go to add layer, add the limited text, click the dot, 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 and browse to your comma separated values table. And it may be. Um, just please, because I had it open in the other saw in Excel. So don't don't try to open it in two programs at once. Okay, so here it is. It recognizes it's a CSV <clears throat> because it has spatial coordinates. Um, I can bring it in bring them in as point coordinates. If it didn't have spatial attributes, you could still bring it in as a database or as a spreadsheet, but with no geometry. It automatically recognizes latitude and longitude in northern and eastern. So I'm going to say change over the X field that is east to west is going to be eastings. Change in the Y direction is going to be northings. Z will be elevation. <clears throat> M is there are linear referencing numbers that we're not using here. And it picked up that the coordinate system in the, in the right column there 
it knows that we're in the ATM plane north. Also, I already uh, now the project is still 4326. But when I bring in data, the first layer you bring into a GIS re, uh, re uh, updates the coordinate system to the first layer you bring in. So look, it's it's changed it to 6339 because there's only one layer, and that's the coordinate system of that layer. Um, the uh, first thing that people often do is want to make sure that their points are appearing in the right position on the surface of the Earth. So a very popular plugin for QGIS is called Quick Map Services. I recommend everybody install this. It has a number of plugins. Um, I would search for this term and, and install it, check it, and click install. And let's look at what is under the, the web menu here. There's many layers. If you've just installed it, you probably only have a handful of layers, two or three. Uh, to have more layers available, go to settings and choose more services and then click get contributed pack and it'll load up and get many more layers, including this handy uh, Google hybrid layer, which has, uh, it's basically imagery with labels burned in. And it looks like my points are in the right place. I'm going to turn on I have uh, the styling pane on the right over here, turned on by clicking this icon. And I'm gonna change the color to be more visible. And I'm gonna turn on labels here. And you can see site datum and the number five is hard to read against the tree. So I'm going to turn on the buffer. And so now you can see the site datum, everything has come in properly. However, if I hover on here, I can see that the path is still, if you look at this, the second and third line there, it's pointing to that CSV file on my hard drive. So it's a, that's not a great way to manage your data in the long run, because if something happens to that CSV, if it gets moved, uh, this will break the link. So first, you know, after making sure it's in the right place, the second thing people typically do is save, export, save features. You know, I right-clicked it. Uh, or option click on a Mac, save features as, and you can do a shape file or a geo package or any number of formats. Um, let's do a shape file here, file name. I'm going to call this Smith targets. These are drone targets on a nearby property. And <clears throat> It knows the coordinate reference system is 6339. If you, if you click this, you can see that it's relevant here in California. So there it came in and it inherited, well, it doesn't have the labels. That was this layer. So I'll go ahead and turn on labels on this one as well. And remove the CSV. So the other thing I wanted to demonstrate in this workshop is that the uh, issue of site-specific coordinates. So in this Excel spreadsheet, arbitrary coordinate training.csv, I've, I've got a, an example of a site that's in Easting 2000, Northern 4000. Now, the example I showed in my slides was Easting 200, Northern 400. So 2,000, 4,000, you might do that in a bigger site, right? With, um, where you, where you, you want to have the, the space to, um, to map things that are a kilometer or two away from the data. So that's why I use these larger numbers. So how could you bring this into the GIS? Because these, these are referencing my arbitrary or my site-specific data, right? So there's two ways you can do that. One is to bring it into any metric coordinate system in the GIS. So if I had brought this into UTM 10 North, I think it would work. But the strange thing is that it would be down by the equator, right? Because one, because 4,000 Northern is, is only four kilometers from the equator. So it's basically gonna be at the bottom of my, my zone 10. And I could move that to, I could, I could bring in, I could bring in all my data 
and it'll be down by the equator. And I can just use the move features tool in QGIS to slide it up to my present space. But in terms of geodesy, that's a little strange because, because UTM zones are not equal width. They, they converge to the north. And so there'll be subtle error in my northing if I if I go ahead and do that, that's the simplest way probably, but to move it graphically from the equator up. But for, for greater accuracy, I will use another method, which is to <clears throat> simply do a little math in Excel before bringing it in. So let's go ahead and open the table that has the drone targets. And here's my, remember my site datum, and UTMs is right here. So let's go ahead and bring that into my arbitrary table. And what I'm trying to do is make this site datum fall on this point in UTM space, and then use the same conversion with all my archaeological features that I mapped relative to this site data. So the simple way to do that is to just do the math here. So let's call this one Easting, Easting 2. And what does it take to convert this easting of 2000 to, to this easting? Well, it's basically, I'll do equals 2000 plus, I'm going to type these values minus 2000. So 5661666. Oh, and I, I need to subtract 2000. So I'll do 564. And visually compare, this is the same as this, so that's good. Same with northing. I'll do equals 4,000 plus 4, 1, and then I have to subtract 4,000, so I'll do 8, 7, 3, 1, 0. Oh, I think there might be something beyond the decimal. Let's do that and then expand it to check. Oh, yeah, there's a point one there. One. And that works. Now that the elevation might be a little uh, too. Elevation is only 137 above, above uh, sea level. So let's use Excel to do the math for this. So I, I want this to be. Uh, what is it going to take to make a thousand um, line up with 137.5? Well, I'll just do a thousand minus 137.5 is 8632.5. So equals. Um, so minus. No, I guess, yeah, that should be eight, negative 8632.5, right? All right, so now that same transformation, we'll just do fill down. And all these points are now adjusted relative to the data. Now this is working because I used, I used true north in this coordinate system. And true north here, so everything, uh, so the math is quite easy. Uh, I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't try to do this if, if I didn't hadn't used true north. If I hadn't used true north, what I would probably do is um, bring in the datum, and then bring everything in relative to the datum, but then be prepared to pivot around the datum in QGIS. Okay, so let's remove these columns. We no longer need them. I'm gonna save it. Excel doesn't like saving to CSV because it loses a lot. It loses the formatting, it loses additional tabs. There's a number of things that are lost, but in this case, I think we're good. <clears throat> Close this. It's in, and then let's Go ahead and bring this into QGIS, demonstrate. Once again, it's comma separated, but we're going to bring in the arbitrary coordinates training. And remember, it was called Easting. So that you can see right here, Easting 2, Northern 2, Elevation 2 is what we're going to use. 
because these are real world coordinates. Add and it looks like they came in. We can, we can uh, test it by looking at the site datum. There's the site datum. We'll turn this on and off and it looks like they're in the same spot. So that's about it for this workshop. Uh, in my follow-up workshop, I'm going to show you how to draw lines and polygons, do a little more uh, symbology on these, and then lay out a map for, uh, for demonstrating scale and legend and export. Thanks for watching.